we talked about how fluoride is useless in protecting your teeth. Today, I want to show you these original lab research papers about the toxicity of fluoride and especially as it relates to the brain. Now, a couple days ago, two days ago, I was eating dinner at the Harvard Club with a Harvard PhD scientist, and we were talking about the toxicity of fluoride. And my buddy, he's got his PhD from Harvard, he says he hasn't used fluoride in his toothpaste in over 10 years. And not only that, he's never had a cavity in his life, and he just brushes with an electric toothbrush and water, no toothpaste at all. So he's not taking any chances, nor should you. Let's look at the research. Starting in 2013, in a journal called Toxicology Letters, the title of this review paper is A Brief Review on Experimental Fluorosis. All right? And this is a hard-hitting review. They start by saying, until the 1990s, the toxicity of fluoride was largely ignored due to its good reputation. Wow. And they say, yeah, fluoride is a naturally occurring substance in the environment, which is a good point. Um, it, it's, it's a necessary trace element. And the key word, I think, is trace. You need some of it. You certainly don't need to overdose it. And they say fluoride is present in vegetables, fruits, and other foods. So that's an important point, and we'll have to go through that in the next episode. What's going on in our soil and the soil depletion that we have is a huge problem. But moving on, um, they find excess ingestion of fluoride all around the world, and they define that. They define too much fluoride as anything above 1.5 parts per million, 1.5. And they say, in fact, in some places in India, they've got it up to 13 parts per million, fluoride. So what happens? Right. Well, it starts with locomotor impairment from having too much fluoride. And they call this fluorosis, by the way, and fluorosis means too much fluoride, right? So this, they have this whole list of problems that come from fluorosis, starting with locomotor impairment. In other words, they're having movement problems. If you're children that are exposed, and it also adds adults, children and adults that are exposed to too much fluoride. Next, heart problems, left ventricular heart problems, thyroid hormone derangement, visual disturbance, muscle weakness, respiratory symptoms, in other words, lung problems, renal impairment, kidney problems, abnormality in glucose tolerance. Uh, fluoride accelerated calcification of blood vessels. In other words, hardening your arteries. We're talking about things like plaques in your arteries leads to strokes, leads to heart attacks. And it still goes on. I mean, this is nuts. Uh, accelerated aging. It's caused by high levels of fluoride. Reduction in the levels of reproductive hormones in men. Right, miscarriages, birth abnormalities, mental retardation, cancer in the bone, lungs, and, and bladder. And they said fluoride, and here's where, here's where I want to focus. Fluoride can penetrate into the brain. They say fluoride produces harmful effects in the brain. The intelligence of children living in these high levels, of, it, it results in impaired, de, de, in, in, excuse me, defects in their cognition and memory, which we'll look at. And it's chronic, this is a quote, I'm quoting all of this. Chronic fluorosis seems to have a role in Alzheimer's disease because this disease is more common among people living in high fluoride contaminated regions. That's a huge list. So let's move on and just focus on the brain. And I think you'll prob you're probably already convinced you certainly shouldn't be exposing your children to fluoride. You shouldn't even be exposing yourself to fluoride. So another review paper here, this one's called Fluoride and Children's Intelligence, right? And this one is interesting because they went over papers from the past 20 years. It's called a meta-analysis. They looked at all these papers, large numbers of papers, and their conclusion was that if, you ha if you're exposed to high levels of fluoride, above 1.5 parts per million, you, that it, you're five times more likely to develop low IQ. And they're talking about children. Not, you start with low IQ, you develop the low IQ from the fluoride. That's a huge problem. So, 2015, the Journal of Neurotoxicology and Teratology. Teratology means the study of uh, birth abnormalities. 
This paper is called The Association of Lifetime Exposure to Fluoride in Cogn Cognitive Functions in Chinese Children. And essentially the study, they say, supports the notion that fluoride in drinking water may produce developmental neurotoxicity. And why is that a problem? This is 2015. Well, they tell you why that's a problem. Here's a quote. The developing human brain is much more susceptible to injury caused by toxicants than is the mature brain, and the damage incurred is likely to be of a permanent nature. We're talking about permanent brain damage from levels of fluoride that are put in our water. And you might be asking, well, what's, what's the level of fluoride right now in our water? Well, it's anywhere between 0.7 parts per million and one part per million. And they're defining excess levels, dangerously high levels, as anything above 1.5 parts per million. So we're kind of on the verge of excess levels just from the drinking water. And let's, let's wrap this up with one final paper. This one's 2016 in a journal called Environmental Research. It's called Urinary and Plasma Fluoride Levels in Pregnant Women from Mexico City. Why do they use Mexico City? They tell you it's because apparently the salt down there in Mexico has levels up to 250 parts per million of fluoride. So they're getting exposed to way too much fluoride. And they looked at almost a thousand pregnant women and they say 100% of the samples had too much fluoride. 100% of these pregnant women. Remember, we're talking about brain damage in developing brains. It's permanent brain damage according to that paper, the paper we looked at before. And one other question before we, we close this, right, is what are the levels in toothpaste? I get asked that all the time. Well, again, anytime you go above 1.5, 1, 1 part per million, somewhere in there, you're talking about toxic levels. Toothpaste is over 1,000 parts per million. So in other words, if you're swallowing 1,000th of your toothpaste that has fluoride in it, it's dangerous levels. You brush three times a day, especially children, we're talking about brain damage. We're talking about a laundry list of problems. I hope this helps you understand. Avoid fluoride.